What's up model car mechanics? Have you ever been to a hobby shop and you saw a model car, but you really wanted to know what was inside the box before you bought it? Today I'm going to open up and show you what's inside the AMT 1978 Trans Am model kit. And if you stick to the end of this video, I will show you a great model car tip that will make your models look magnificent. So let's go down to the bench and see what's in the box. Suddenly it's 1978 and we're once again running with the devil as we check out the AMT Ertl 1978 Trans Am model kit. This is a 125th scale model kit, skill level 2, comes with a T-top roof with authentic screaming chicken decals, you get a 6.6 .6 liter V8 under the hood, and a shaker scoop as well as a deck lid spoiler. On this side of the box we get an awesome side view of our Trans Am all built up. And over here we can see that 6.6 .6 liter V8, as well as the interior. Now one of the more popular shows back in the 70s was of course Smokey and the Bandit, as well as the Rockford Files, which both used 78 Trans Ams. This one is more of the Smokey and the Bandit type. So let's just take the lid off and see what's inside. Here right away we get our nice Trans Am instruction sheet as well as the decals, which we'll take a look at at the end of the video. Our chrome parts tree in a bag. Now I do believe we were working on this model, but there is the body, and then our glass in a bag as well, and then all the plastic components down here, as well as the wheels and tires in the corner. Here we have our instruction sheet, which is one of those great big fold-out styles. We have our important details up here in many different languages, as well as all the little symbols we will see as we build the model kit. So just above our first panel we have this nice color chart with all the colors marked by a letter as well. Here's our engine block, and as you can see we've got a right and left hand side engine as well as a transmission. Separate oil pan, there's our water pump cover, here we have our cylinder head as well as a chrome plated valve cover and the breather cap. Then we've got our intake manifold, our carburetor, our distributor. So again, very nicely done, easy in the first step. Panels two and three complete our engine, so I'll start with panel two first. Here we have our fan being glued onto our fan belt and pulleys, and then we have our chrome alternator gluing on as well. There is the three pieces to make up the shaker scoop part of our car, which bolt onto the top of the air cleaner and then that drops onto the carburetor. There we have our fans and pulleys being put in place. We've got a starter motor as well as this breather pipe which goes onto our exhaust manifold. And there should be an exhaust manifold for the other side of the engine block. The wheels and tires are very simplistic for this kit. Here we have the Pontiac wheel in the front, then our tire which we need to cut out this spider web in the middle, then we have a little backing peg as well as the back end of the wheel. That's on the front of the car. For the back we have again the wheel, the tire, and then a solid backing cap, which of course will all glue together and then we can mount them on the car. Panels 6, 7, and 8 all relate to the interior. Here we have our dashboard and then we have our steering wheel with a console on it, which go into the hole here. Our front seats have a front and a back and then the dashboard and the seats drop into our interior bucket tub, as well as the chrome-plated shifter down below. Panel 9 shows our radiator support wall, as well as the radiator, that's molded as one piece, with the battery going in place and the fan shroud, and all of this drops onto our chassis. The rear suspension components in panel 10 are quite simple. Here we have these little blocks and a metal axle that goes through into the back of our wheels. Then we have the entire exhaust assembly, differential, rear springs all dropping into place, and then we do have a drive shaft which will go and hook up to our engine. Speaking of our engine, in panel 11 it glues onto the bottom of the chassis on this bracket, and then we have our lower A-arms gluing in place up onto this kingpin, and then our wheel will glue on there. So this is the one with the cap inside. Panel 12 shows the back end of the car. We have this really long red clear transparent taillight panel which glues in from behind. There's our rear bumper. This is a decal for the bumper as well as a Pontiac emblem and gluing onto our rear spoiler. We also have a Trans Am decal. Panel 13 shows our glass and the components we need to remove from this part in order to get it to fit in the car. 
As for our body, there is a bracket brace that's across the hood opening, which needs to be removed. There's our front nose being glued on with the insert parts, which of course would be our headlights. And then there's our firewall gluing onto our, the front of our interior tub, and our glass glues up from underneath to complete the body. In panel 15, we glue on the front fairings around the wheel openings, as well as this little chin spoiler in the front. Here we have our hood going on in place, as well as the T-tops and our side mirrors. All this will drop onto our chassis, and then we have an upper radiator hose which attaches the engine to our radiator. Step 16 shows our decal locations, and as you can see there are quite a lot with all these nice gold pinstripings going around, our Firebird emblem here, as well as the big one on the hood. Here we have the components that makes up the car. Right here is our body, of course, there's our front nose clip, as well as the rear bumper. Now the rear spoiler is still on the parts tree, so we'll see that in a minute. And here we have the hood as well. So I'm going to just show you what this body looks like when you glue these components together. Here we have our Trans Am body, and there is a lot of components on here that are molded in nicely, like the little side scoop, the door handles, the side marker lights, and of course our T-tops with a little ridge around them so the T-tops don't fall through. There's some nice grill detail on this brace as well. Uh, but, as we see, there's our rear bumper glued into place. And there are quite a bit of gaps. This actually hangs out quite a lot. Our spoiler goes on nicely, of course. I also had to etch in the little lines around here just to open them up on the trunk. And then our front end also doesn't quite fit flush on here. So I needed to reinforce it with a little strip of evergreen styrene just underneath in order to hold this better. There's our fairings glued on as well, which didn't turn out too badly. But again, there is quite a bit of gap issues and fit problems with this kit, which need to be resolved with some putty. Up front, there's our nice grill. The Pontiac emblem is molded in place, so again, very nicely done as well as the slats for our rear taillights. So despite some fit issues, this kit does turn out to be not too bad at the end. Oh, and here we can also see how our hood would go into place, which fits on quite nicely. Here we have our interior tub, and it is fairly simplistic. However, the uh, big problem with this is, of course, the gigantic mold marks which are sitting on the four corners in the floor. Our door panels are very soft on the molding. Actually isn't really too much that you can see for door handles and door panels. Up front we have in the automatic setup, so there's our gas pedal. Actually this is the standard setup, so there's our gas pedal, the uh, brake, and of course our clutch. Then we've got a nice little bit in the interior at the center console. But overall, this is uh, quite soft and simplistic for the interior. Next we have our chassis, which is not too bad. There is a lot of wire detail on the inner fender aprons. Quite a bit of flash onto this kit. If we turn it over, you can see the nice detailing underneath. Here we have our fuel cell, as well as a bit of the brake lines back here. There's those upstanding pillars for the metal axle to go through. Lots of nice detail underneath here. And then we get into our front end, which of course has a big, chunky sort of separation line in here. There's the holes to go through with the metal axle for our, or actually for the little pegs. Those are the holes for that kingpin up front. So again, it's not too bad, but very simplistic and very characteristic of this time period for model kits. Our next parts tree includes all the fairings and the spoiler which glues onto the body, as well as our fan shroud. There's our lower A arms and those kingpins for the front, as well as our drive shaft. And here is that complete rear axle, rear leaf springs, and exhaust system that we saw in the instructions. Our next parts tree includes our Delco battery, the snorkel for our air cleaner, which goes to our exhaust manifolds, which are located here, our side mirrors, and our upper radiator hose. Let's just take a look at these a little closer into the camera. The detail, there is a texture on here. There's also quite a bit of flash. The side mirrors have an indentation, which uh, of course is for the mirror. Battery's hollow, 
and there is quite a bit of flash which much must be removed. Overall, not too bad. Here we have the components that make up the engine, and my wife, this is actually her model, so she's glued the engine block halves together and cut out a bunch of the pieces. So we can easily go over these. These two components are the T-tops that you get in the kit. There's our valve covers there. The engine block with its engine block as well as transmission halves, which my wife glued together. There's the front timing cover. There's our intake manifold. Our air cleaner with the snorkel. And mounted on top of that, of course, will be our shaker hood scoop components. There's the back end, the scoop itself, and the bottom of the scoop. And then here we have our radiator, as well as the radiator wall, and our firewall. Again, I do believe the best detailed pieces on this are the firewall and our rad support and radiator. If you turn this over, you can also see the great detail on the back side. Here we have the components that make up our interior, including our dashboard, the steering wheel, and our front bucket seats with the seat backs. I have this one turned over so you can see what it would look like from the back side instead of from the inside. Now let's just take a look at our dashboard here, which I'll bring up into the camera. Again, we can see the wonderful gauges on here, which are located there and there, as well as all our details, even a radio down below, and a nice little glove box molded in place. This again is one of those really nice interior components. The steering wheel can easily pop in place, and there it is, our rally wheel, which is really amazing looking. Next we have our chrome parts tree, which includes these nice exhaust dumps at the back of the car. There's our grill inserts with four square headlights, as well as a nice little grill, which, of course, you can always enhance with the black wash. Then here we have our fan. There's our belts and pulleys. The little breather for our valve covers, which are located here. There it looks like we've got an alternator, or possibly, no, that would be the distributor. The starter motor, the alternator, as well as something else there. There's our oil pan and our shift lever. So if we bring this up into the camera, again, you can see just how nice that detailing is in there. Should make a good representation of this car. There's our oil pan with the oil filter up the side. Turning this over, not too bad for mm, sink marks. There are some on the back here, which of course you can sandpaper off. And then paint this flat black, so if you're looking in from behind the car, you won't see it. Actually, sand these off, I do believe you just glue it into the indentation, now that I'm thinking about that. There's our fan there. Everything looks really nice, and just as it should. And, of course, we realize there's not a lot of chrome on this Pontiac to begin with. Here are the clear plastic components for our model kit, which includes the rear glass and the front windshield. And, like it said in the instructions, the best thing we can do is cut off this bridge there and there, and remove this hook in the front. There's our rear tail lamps, and I just thought I would move this out of the way and show you how these fit into the back end. They easily go in like that. There's a recessed area for our license plate, but overall it's just as simple as that. So you could glue that onto the license plate from behind and do pretty well with the rear tail lamps. Here we have all the components that make up our wheels and tires. There's our rubber tires, which have an excellent tread, just like that, and very high lettered Goodyear lettering so that you can paint those if you wish. There's the Pontiac wheels, which again need a bit of a black wash, but will turn out really nice. We've got a metal axle and our rear backing plates, and these are the little retainers for our front backing plates. And now the moment we've all been waiting for, here is our decal sheet. I'll just remove the paper. There it is, all in gold with the nice Trans Am lettering here and here. And then there's the flaming fire chicken, or the firebird emblem, right there. Our 6.6 .6 liter notifications, as well as the little Pontiac trim at the back. Now if you've built this model kit in the past, why not share your experience with our viewers down below by letting us know in the comment section if you found it hard, easy, or if you'd recommend the kit to anyone. I hope you found this video very helpful for your next model car purchase.
Now, as promised, this video right here will show you a really cool technique that you can apply to your model cars. And if you want to see what model cars that you can buy from me today, check out this link right down here. Well, I really hope you enjoyed that video and we'll see you on the next one.